Hi guys, I'm Katie and welcome to my channel. I'm not gonna lie, I was ready to like be calling this, oh, I've read in September. I just feel like we're in September and I don't know why. Just June and July was just one single month that sort of just blipped together. Like I don't understand like what happened. And August has felt this long, I thought we were in September. I actually had a pretty good month for reading. Um, The minute I sort of pick up this certain book I'm about to talk about, I always think, well, I ain't reading anything else. My first read was The Two Towers. So any of you who sort of follow me on Bookstagram and have seen my previous videos, you will know that I love The Hobbit and I was really worried I wouldn't be able to sort of understand it and enjoy it and follow it. And I was really surprised that I could. So when I picked up The Fellowship, and I was like, it was like a different person wrote it. I just really struggled with it. I don't know if it's because it was setting the scene. I know he wrote it with the intention that like not to finish it because he didn't think it'd be popular. But this book to me felt like The Hobbit. I understood it, it flowed. I was so happy because I was really kind of thinking this is going to take me nearly three weeks again, like the last one. I got this done in about two weeks. So that was fine because that was what I anticipated for the first one and what I got The Hobbit done in. And that was when I was commuting to work before and I had all that extra reading time. It was really good and I really enjoyed it. It was set sort of in like two halves of the fellowship. So Sam and Frodo's journey is in like the back half, everyone else is in the front half. Part of me kind of wishes it kind of intermingled just to like break it up a bit. I think it would have been a bit nicer, but hey. <laughs> For those of you who saw my stories on Bookstagram, you will know the horror and trauma I went through with the second to last chapter, Shalos Slayer. I was getting serious flashbacks to when I was a child traumatised in that cinema. There was so, so much unnecessary detail about that spider, it is ridiculous. The only upside is that obviously in the film it ended the second one with Gollum leading them there and in the third one it was like, hey! But um, this one, like, it's past the spiders. I can at least know, I really pray because I had to ask my friend this, that the third one I am safe right because I can't I can't do it again. I I was at work like holding it like I was like it made me feel ill. Like, I can't do it. I, I don't know what it is about writers when they go, hmm, I feel like I want to add some perils, some threats, something scary. I know a beast or a monster I know. Let's include a massive of spider. That that will really be great. But yeah I've never had it in such detail. So I gave this book four stars. I think I would have, regardless of the horrifying chapter that was included, um, I'm really looking forward to picking up the third one, Return of the King. I've decided I'm going to probably read that um, October time. I just... Okay, so in my head, like, it totally makes sense because I feel like if I read it in winter, it will be depressing as anything because it's obviously, you know, it's the last book, everything's coming to a head. And remembering what I do about the film, you know, it's battles, you know, Frodo's practically dying and they're trying to get the ring in the fire. It, everything's coming to a head, it's war, it's grim. Not maybe a winter read. I feel like, you know, October, autumn hasn't quite ended, winter hasn't quite begun, at least not here for us it hasn't. Because we normally get a weird, like, second wind of summer in sort of September, like, l early October. It's very strange. So I just feel like that seems like the perfect book to kind of transition. It just seems like a really good idea. My second book, Stolen Nights by Rachel Mizell, is the um, sequel to the book that has been on my shelf for over 10 years, Infinite Days. Again, so surprised by this book. Adolescent Katie picked so well. I gave this book three and a half stars, mainly because she sort of started sort of adding a lot of new supernatural elements and really expanding and growing on that. And that I really appreciate and really like, you know, it's not just a bog standard vampire thing. There are sort of extras and it's stuff like to do with like the ritual that made her human in the first place. It's all about your intent. And if you're not willing to sacrifice yourself, you know, it's going to backfire or, you know, you'll both die and you won't get what you want. So what I really like about this is all the stuff to do with like the summoning spells. It's all about your intent. If there's even a part of you that is actually not being true and the reason why you're summoning this person is for another reason, it won't work. It's sort of over a very short period of time and everything sort of um, gathers together. So the ritual spells that were um, done in the first book is basically that magic is drawing other powerful vampires who crave that magic. They want it because the older you get, I like what, see again, this is what I love about this book, the older you get, the crazier you go. One slight issue, aside from the annoying her acting a bit like a stroppy teenager considering she's like 500 years old. Basically to get, for her to become a human in the first book, another vampire has to do the ritual. And like I said, it's all about your intent and they have to sacrifice themselves. So Rode, her lover and her maker does that for her. He dies at the very beginning. She wakes up, she's human, he's there, but then he's like, gotta die now, bye. And I don't tend to bother reading blurbs of sequels because I don't want any sort of like, not spoilers, I don't want to know where it's heading. It's very, 
very rare that I'll read the blurb of a book. It might just be if I've kind of forgotten if it's like been that long. So I don't often do it. So I didn't bother with this. This isn't a spoiler because it gets spoiled for you. Um, she finds out that basically Rhoda's alive and he's been alive this entire time. So I was like, oh, what a good twist right at the start. Now we're going to have an annoying love triangle. And then I don't know for what reason, but I read the back of the book. I think the words Rhoda caught my eye. And basically the blurb told you that he survived. And I just, it really bugged me, because I just thought that was such like a, not like a big twist, but obviously having read it without knowing that, I was like, oh. So yeah, that was a bit annoying, but I am looking forward to the third one. My third book, I'm so excited to talk about this. Origin, Dan Brown. So for those of you who may have read this, um, know how much of why I loved it. For those of you who watched my review, if you haven't already, definitely check that out. You will know why I love this. I will not lie, I got so excited, so hyped up, so I don't know what happened to me. I gave myself like a headache. I, I it was like I just got crammed full of sugar and cocaine and anything that will give you a massive buzz. I think I had an outer body experience because I finished it and I was like, my brain! I just, I got so excited about this. So obviously you your standard Dan Brown formula, but this is slightly different. The other books are very much more classic art, literature, history. You know, you've got Da Vinci, The Masons, um, Dante's Inferno. So that sort of thing, you know, a lot of um, puzzle solving, clue solving, like, you know, codes decoding. This, because the person who this is kind of revolves around is a futurist and it's very technology um, like orientated it's more modern and there is less of that because that doesn't happen now in modern stuff like all the hidden symbols and all that stuff so it's kind of nice and slightly refreshing to have that difference but you still have like him you know like doing his normal this is such and such which is like great because I love history this book is set in Spain in Barcelona and I've been here so for me this is really awesome because I could like picture all the stuff like I have been to Rome and stuff and like the Vatican I've been inside but that was so long ago and I read them before I really went so some of it was like a little bit fuzzy it's really good and I would so this is such like a great holiday read as well because it's very fast paced and everything's happening so I think because of his sort of chosen formula these work because they come out one every so often so if you read I think one after the other like year after year you'd be like this is ridiculous. I have actually realised that that was my second read and the other book was my third read because stupidly I don't even know how I forgot that. I somehow I picked up Stolen Nights thinking, okay, well, you know, I've got like one week left of the month and this will be like my night, this will tide me over into the start of September, but we get it done like, you know, the first full week of September, like midway through there. I finished it in three days, so I was like, oh, like that hasn't happened to me in so long. So I was like, this is unexpected. So because of that, it's kind of thrown me slightly because I'll explain. I started to read Sally Green's latest book, The Smoke Thieves. Now I love, love this author and she does not get enough like love. I feel like she's so under just, there's just not enough presence of her online. And I don't know if it's because she doesn't have social media, so she doesn't interact with us, I don't know. But I loved her half like wild, bad, whatever trilogy. And it was so amazing. I just, I can't even stress this. If you saw my book likes Q&A, then you will hear, have the, you will have heard me like gush about this book so much. Well, the series, not this book, because I haven't read this one yet. So basically, I have been thinking about doing um, like a read with me sort of like um, reading vlog thing. And I thought, you know what? I was like, this will be um, the first book I'll do it with. And I was like, I'm posting that after like um, this video, so next Sunday. But this is like throwing me, because I'm currently filming this at the moment. So I'm just like, what? This is really weird. But I've only read about the first two chapters and I am really enjoying it so far. The characters that she's introduced, the sort of the ground setting for the world, they're living in a very scary and brutal kingdom. I didn't want to get too much of like my hopes up because I loved her previous series. I wanted to kind of be like open because you know it might not be like the best thing you've ever read or it just might be, it could be just amazing. So I was like, you know, keep an open mind, you know, just keep it cool. So this book is basically five people whose lives all become intertwined because of this kingdom. A princess, a soldier, a hunter, a traitor, a thief. So I'm very excited. Um, so yes, it's your very typical sort of young adult, you know, kingdoms and stuff like that and alliances and shifting traitors, not traitors, but you know, all that stuff. It's very fun and obviously it's going to be heading in the direction of war. So my next two picks for the month, the final instalment, Eternal Dawn and Warbringer. Wonder Woman! I feel like I should have done that. Wonder Woman! Because I have been so pleasantly and ridiculously surprised by these books, I thought actually, you know what, I am going to read this in September. I was going to sort of maybe thought about reading it the start of October, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to go for this. Also, it doesn't feel like a wintry book. 
So, hmm. I am very much hoping that this book doesn't flop or doesn't kind of take a downhill slide because, like I said, I've been so surprised by the other ones and, you know, they haven't been too cliche, awful vampire. So I'm really kind of hoping that this one can sort of ride the... I'll, I'll settle for steady at this point. It doesn't even need to suddenly be like, oh my god, amazing. I just don't want it to just go... Yes, I know this book has been out for ages and I haven't read it because I'm useless. I think this comes back to the thing of I like to read books all together and even though they're not technically going to probably tie together, I wanted to read the four of them all together because that's how my brain works. But I'm forcing myself not to do this. I'm like trying to pick more, not obscure books, but I'm trying to pick more books to just be like, break from that, read it when you want to read it. So I am very much looking forward to this, you know. It is younger woman in her younger days, I think, because I read the blurb years ago. <laughs> but yeah, I really love Gail Gadot as her, so I can really kind of just picture her so well, especially when she was young and being all cute and naive. But I am really looking forward to this. I think this popped up on my radar again because the Catwoman one is coming out. And I've been seeing that quite a lot on Instagram, so I was like, oh, actually, you know what? Maybe I will read this. So I am quite looking forward to this. I do love um, Lee Bardugo, so... I am, and I've heard such great things as well, but I have only read her Grisha trilogy. I haven't managed to bring myself to read Six of Crows yet, and I don't know why. I don't know, it's just, I, it's just not quite, I don't know what it is about it. I'm just like so on the fence, and I'm just sort of just not fussed, which is weird because I really enjoyed Grisha. It's kind of like um, Vampire Academy by Rachel Mead. I, like... I, just, I had a battle with it, that was the first thing. I did have a battle with it, even though it was ridiculous, so I knew I really liked it. And I wanted to read the spin-off Bloodlines, but I still haven't done it, and it's just like a kind of, eh, I'll get to it. I think which is a bit like those previous books, um, the Infinite Days ones. I've, it's just been like, I've just been pushing it back, and I'm just like, eh, sort of thing. So I think I'm probably, that's definitely going to be like, because I always try and read at least one book off my Kindle as well. So I think that's probably going to be my, you know what, it's been on your shelf for like years, just read it because you enjoyed Vampire Academy, so come on. I'm really so looking forward to reading this, so yeah, I am can't quite work out if I'm going to read this before or after Eternal Dawn. I feel like I should have that in a sandwich, that if Eternal Dawn isn't great, this will like really pick me up. So those are my books for this month and next month, although technically we're already in next month. So last month and this month, there you go. But let me know what you guys have been reading as well. What do you think of my choices? Um, have you sort of like glimpsed at any of these and thought, hmm, maybe. And also, have you read Sally Green? Do you love her as much as me? Is it just me who just thinks like there is just some sort of like, just she's just not getting the love she deserves. I am so tired, guys. You've no idea. It's ridiculous. I don't even know why I'm this tired. If I could eat a nap, which is annoying because I want to go read some more of the smoke thieves, but I'm just like sleep now. Maybe I take a nap. That might help me awaken. I feel like I haven't been as like sort of happy and bubbly, but I think just because I am very tired, I'm just like keep your eyes open. If you like this video, then please give me a like and of course comment because I always want to hear from you, as I said. And if you are new, then hello and welcome. Please feel free to subscribe so you can join the funness of all of this. And yes, I really hope that my next video works out well. I'm really hoping because I like the idea of doing it and I like the idea of sort of doing a sort of my first initial thoughts as I'm reading it and sort of my first week of reading it. So yeah, here's hoping that like it goes well and that you guys love it and then yay and have a good week that it's coming and yeah, see you next Sunday guys. Bye.